What's going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome back to Intro to Web Development Episode 6. In this episode, we're just going to learn a bunch more text formatting tags and do a little bit more practice, so this is going to be kind of a casual tutorial. Now I encourage you guys to right now stop the video, minimize the video so that you can't see it, open up a blank text document and try and write the base code of a website like I have on the screen here. But try to do it from your mind. Of course if you get stuck you can obviously look at this video and see what you missed, but try and do it from your mind because the more that you do this without looking at anything, the more you're going to learn this base HTML code. Alright, so once you have your base HTML code like right here, we're going to begin learning a few more text formatting tags. The first tag that we're going to learn is called the header tag, and basically it's just an H followed by a number 1 through 6. There's actually 6 of these header tags, so I'm going to do H1, and this is the most common one. H1 actually is the biggest, so what this does is it makes any text in between the opening and closing H1 tags big, bigger than usual, so it can be used as a title or mainly a header for things. So I'm just going to say this is header um, 1, like so. And if we go ahead and open up your web browser, open up your file and refresh it, you can see that we get this as header 1, and this is clearly bigger text than usual. Now I did mention that there are 6 header tags, simply h1 through h6. Now the bigger the number you go, the smaller the text it's going to be. So if I do h3, and I write some text in between the opening and closing h3 tags, I'm going to say this is header 3, because 3 is bigger than 1, we're going to get smaller text for this second header. Go into your page, refresh it, you can see that header 3 is a bit smaller than header 1. So h1 is the biggest, h6 is the smallest, and they're used generally for titles. And you'll also notice that whenever you open up a new header tag, it creates a new line underneath it. So the header tag also kind of generates a new line underneath it without having to have the break tag in there. Alright, so those are the header tags. You're probably going to see those quite a bit. Again, they just make text bigger and bolder, h1 through h6. Now we're going to learn three quick tags here. They should be really simple to learn because they're exactly the same properties as the underline and bold tags that we learned in the last tutorial. Now, say that you're trying to write some type of equation. Say x sub 2 equals uh, 6 plus 5 uh, to the power of 10, right? And if you save this and you look at, at your website here, this is just a random equation I made up, it doesn't look really neat. I kind of want this 2 to be a subscript to the x, and I want the 5 to the power of 10 to not have this weird little character right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to make superscripts and subscripts. And you're going to see what I mean right now. If I want this 2 to be a subscript, what I'm going to do is before I'm going to write the sub tag. And then right after, I'm going to close the subtag. And like I mentioned before, these tags act the exact same way as the underline or bold tag that we learned in the last tutorial. Anything in between the opening and closing subtags, the subscript tags, is going to be subscripted. Go ahead, open up your browser again, refresh the page, and as you can see, the 2 is now kind of in a subscript. It's lower. It's kind of to the bottom right of every other character. It's a little bit smaller and towards the bottom. That's what a subscript is. And the next one you're probably going to notice a little bit more. Say I want to say 5 to the power of 10. I'm going to use the superscript tag. So it's simply SUP and anything in between the opening and closing superscript tags, like the number 10, is going to be a superscript. Go ahead, open up your web browser and reload the page again. You can see that the 10 is now to the upper right of all the text. So it's the opposite of subscript. And you guys will probably know this if you've taken any math class. So you have subscripts with which go lower, and you have superscripts, which go higher than all the rest of the text, and they act the same as other tags that we have learned before. Another tag that I'm going to throw in here is called the small tag. So here is some small text I'm going to write, and right before this small here, I'm going to open up the small tag, and I'm going to close the small tag after it. And the small tag acts exactly like the bold or underline tags that we've learned in the last tutorial as well. Anything in between the opening and closing small tags, like the word small, is going to be a little bit smaller. So if you open up your web browser, reload the page, as you can see this word small is a little bit smaller than all of the surrounding text. These are just some good things to know, you're probably not going to end up using the small tag very often. Now let's move on to a little bit more exciting stuff, because that stuff you should all understand, it, they work exactly like as other tags that we've learned before. 
Now remember how I mentioned that any amount of space in HTML, so if I have a bunch of words and then I have 20 spaces here and then more words, it's only going to show up as one space. I mean, if we run the pro or if we run our website now, there's only one space in between these letters, even though I have a bunch of them in my code here. Well, there's a special tag that actually lets you format stuff in your code without using a bunch of breaks that lets you format stuff to have more spaces or tabs and stuff like that. It's called the pre-format tab. It's simply pre. And it does have a closing tag, of course. So anything in between the opening and closing pre-format tags, the pre-tags, is going to be pre-formatted. And I'll show you what I mean. Basically, if I have the words hello, and then I type a bunch of spaces here, and then I say goodbye, goodbye like that, and we go ahead, save it, and refresh our page, you can see that we actually get a bunch of spaces here. HTML actually recognized that there were more than one space here and put it in there. That's what the preformat tag does. We can even put a few tabs in here and say, hello, maybe we can press the enter key and say second line and put an exclamation point. And then if we go here, reload our page, as you can see, we say hello, goodbye, then we have a few tabs here, we have hello, and then we have a second line, and we didn't even use a break tag. So that's what the preformat tag does. Now, this is not necessarily the recommended way to go about adding more than one space or tabs. We're gonna learn that in the future. You should not get in the habit of constantly using the preformat tag. It's not, I guess, supposed to be used super, super often in websites, but like I said, it's good to know, and we're going to learn how to do the same thing using more, I guess, proper methods in the future. But the preformat tag, it's kind of fun, because you can do anything you want without worrying about only having one space. Next, we're going to talk about quotations. We're going to start with the simplest quotation tag, and that's simply a Q. So an opening Q tag and a closing Q tag. Anything in between the opening and closing quotation tags here is simply going to be in quotes. It's as simple as that. So if I say this is in quotes like so, and we go ahead, run our web page here, we can see that those words are simply surrounded by quotation marks. So you may see the Q tag or the quote tag around here and there. That's what that means. It simply adds quotation marks around the words between them. Now we're going to add something called a block quote. So I'm going to have the block quote tag, if I spell that correctly, and it does have a closing tag as always. And you're going to see what the block, block quote tag does. I'm going to say this is a uh, this is a quote, like so, and save that, and if we run our web page here, and we refresh it, you can see that it says this is a quote. Now there's no quotation marks around it, but you can see that it's actually indented. There's a big space here. So what the block quote does is it basically indents all of your text like that, so that if you have a big paragraph and you're maybe citing someone's work and you're citing something from a book, you can use a block quote and it'll indent it indicating, you know, it's not your own work or you're citing something. And of course the block quote tag can be used for many different things and to achieve many different effects on your site. So the block quote actually actually creates a little indent before the actual text in between the opening and closing block quote tags. And we're going to do something really fun with all of these tags in just a couple of tutorials. So don't worry if you don't quite understand the use or get what these things do. Alright, let's move on to the final tag in, in today's tutorial. It's actually a really fun tag because it's much different than just plain text. It's called the horizontal rule. So I'm going to say this is some text like that, and then I'm going to have the horizontal rule tag. The horizontal rule tag is simply HR and it does not have a closing tag. Then I'm going to write this is more text below it. So what do you think the horizontal rule does? Well, if we open up our tab here and refresh the page, it basically puts a gigantic horizontal line across our page. So as you can see, any text above the horizontal rule will be above the line. Any text that I put below it will be below the line. So a horizontal rule does not have a closing tag, and it simply puts a big horizontal line across the screen. And you'll often see that at the bottom of pages where you have maybe a footer and then copyright information below it. There's many uses for horizontal rules, and we'll be using them, like I said, in a couple of tutorials. So don't worry if you don't fully understand the use or how all of these tags work. We're going to be doing some practice of them in two tutorials from now, so don't worry about that. I hope you guys had fun with this tutorial. We learned a few more things other than just working with text. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about character entities.